Arvind, you've been a great supporter. Uh, thank you, John Leark. I would like to acknowledge your presence and many other people here. Uh, it's really an exciting moment for me in particular because this is our 25th year Silver Jubilee year of our law firm. And um, uh, just to give you a one minute snapshot uh, on the firm, I never wanted to start a law firm you know, at one point of time. And it was head of legal at Bear Stearns and a couple of other people told me to start uh, law firm in 1985. And uh, I said, why should I have one more law firm on the street? There are too many of them, probably you, know, you don't need one more. And um, interestingly, after a couple of times they uh, told me you must do something, then I said, okay, let me un learn uh, as to how these law firms are set up. I had no clue in 1985. So about four years after that, I studied over 100 organizations, law firms, accounting firms, consulting firms. And one of the interesting things that I began to feel is that our law firm model had become such that if I spend more time doing your work, if I put more people on the job, I'm more rewarded. But if I spend less time, do the same work, I'm not rewarded, you know? So, uh, you know, because it's all time-based, right? Uh, many a times, not always. But uh, so I said, what can I do or what can we do something, you know? And the philosophy came up that, uh, you know, most of the law firms had 100-year-old history, and they're very great firms as well and nice to work there. But I said, why can't we become some kind of complementary? And we have no history of 100 years, right? Uh, new kid on the block. So um, I said, okay, uh, their strength is 100 years past. My strength is possibly future 100 years. So we can together create a better world, can leverage on each other's strength. And in the process, the philosophy came up was that every new technology, every new financial instrument, every new uh, business model brings along with it a new legal or tax problem. So if you look at e-commerce, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, quantum computing, fuel cells, nanotechnology, uh, and you know, no uh, space uh, would come up, and number of things that you see every time, political, social, or other economic factors or technological factors create new legal issues. So we said, okay, we'll focus on the futuristic thing and we uh, support to the uh, law firms that have done a great job over the period of the last 100 years. And so, so the approach that came up was anticipate, prepare, and deliver. So what we typically do is to do trend assessment and forecasting as to what's likely to happen over a period of next 3, 5, 10, 15 years from now, or sometimes 20, 30 years also we look at, what new technologies will come. And, um, visualize what kind of new legal problems will come up, what kind of uh, tech, uh, uh, tax issues will come up, and start preparing for them. So we became more like a research-based law firm. So today we spend almost 40% of our time on research, academics, thought leadership, and stuff like that. And when you, know, when you do this uh, research, uh, both secondary and primary, then uh, you know, when actual situation arrives, we are somewhat uh, ready to meet those challenges. And that is why you will see a lot of uh, papers that are on your table, uh, and some of them I can just show you. Uh, of course, in the private equity was something unknown to India in 1991, when India opened up. Uh, all of you know in 1989-90, India was nearly going bankrupt on foreign exchange, and we, you know, we had uh, Narsimha Rao and uh, Prime Minister, uh, Finance Minister Manmohan Singh, he came up and that changed the uh, things a lot. Now, when we talked about uh, funds industry at that point of time to anybody in India, they thought it's a cheat fund, it's a you know, plantation fund, some of those who are in India would know. You know, it was something kind of scheme. You know, we use word scheme in every program that we have, you know, and people think scheme means scheming up something, and you know, and uh, so people were not taking it very seriously. Private equity was completely unknown. So, uh, interestingly, um, you know, I had an opportunity to bring first FI, first private equity. I'll tell you a story separately. And um, it came up. But 1991, uh, India uh, opened up on 21st of June. And we're doing comparative law studies of different countries. And India just opened up. So one thing that was, 
coming up was uh, that the U.S. would become possibly largest investor in India. And we did comparative tax studies and we found code section 865, some of you know much better than what I know, uh, that deals with source rules on capital gains. So the way in which U.S. rules are written are exactly opposite to the way in which they are written in India. As a result, when a U.S. investor invests in India, Indian company shares, and sells the shares of an Indian uh, company, earns capital gains, he ends up paying tax in India. But when Indian would invest in the U.S. corporation and um, he sells the share, even if he makes a billion dollar, he doesn't pay tax because according to U.S., source is where the holder of security resides, where India considers that source of shares is where the company is incorporated. Because of this mismatch, there was a huge problem and particularly, so tax credit was a major issue um, for uh, investing in India. And, um, uh, you know, this was a big issue because you, at that point of time, I think in the U.S. it was 39, 40 percent state level tax, city level tax, maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 percent. India used to charge 25 percent to 50 percent tax on capital gains. And, uh, you know, so you, you almost ended up 80, 90 percent in taxes. The rest was taken away by lawyers, perhaps, or accounting firms, I don't know. So, you know, nothing was left. Then we started thinking, how do we overcome this. It was very difficult to change. Uh, you know, politically, it's difficult to avoid capital gains uh, because it's considered to be capitalist movement, right? So at that time, we were just coming out of socialistic shadow. And um, and then uh, we were doing further uh, studies, and I uh, came across uh, the famous Mauritius Treaty. And I said, this is different. This is strange because India has not signed many treaties like this. I never knew where is Mauritius. I thought Mauritius, Malta, Maldives, everything looks somewhat similar, and you know, and um, um, like a researcher, you know, I said, let let let's make a trip to Mauritius. Nice beaches and stuff like that. Um, people start work a little late and end up at three, four o'clock. They want to go on golf course or somewhere else. A very interesting uh, place, you know. And so I, I landed up in the morning. Uh, seven o'clock and uh, asked somebody whether can we set up a, a company for the U.S. investor. They said, no, we don't do offshore regime in uh, Mauritius and, you know, but we want to do one, you know, why don't you meet a minister? So I said, I'm here for two days, how can I meet a minister? He said, no, it's a small island and um, uh, you can meet minister, we'll organize. So at 11.30, 12 o'clock, I ended up minister. And we got into conversation and suggested him to set up offshore financial center there. And he was very excited. So he's set up my talk for all the professionals and all the bureaucrats at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the evening in a hotel. And I addressed them that it's a nice idea to set up a clean offshore jurisdiction here. And um, so when I addressed, I told them two things, that it's, uh, uh, you have a unique opportunity to tap uh, investment into India and um, but you don't have offshore regime, so you set up. But two things you bear in mind. KYC norms should be the toughest and focus on fund industry because that brings some kind of reputation. And then begin to help Mauritius government develop offshore financial center and um, eventually set up very first company there. That was also Barclays Resort Weight Investment Management, Bizvim those days was for Hong Kong and um, set up very first uh, fund that was Bombay Fund Limited. Um, uh, it was first FI, by the way, in India. Uh, and the second company uh, that was set up was Alliance Capital, uh, India Liberalization Fund. A third one was George Soros and Chase Capital, uh, Indian uh, Indocian Fund. Like that, first five companies ended up setting up and uh, eventually everybody began to come in. And that's how Mauritius was born, just to give you a little perspective. So really what drive Mauritius was uh, this double tax, uh, uh, the non-creditability of the taxes. Other interesting thing that um, um, uh, one needs to bear in mind is that between US and India, and between India and many other countries, we had no bilateral investment protection treaty. So the fund manager's job, I said, is not only to see that you earn good income, but you also um, make sure that investment is even protected. Because before you get income, more important thing is to see that your investment is protected. U.S. and India do not have bilateral. Even today, we do not have BIT. 
Okay, that you must have seen last few years, so many cases under BIT have happened against India. Uh, Vodafone was one of them and the other ones that have happened. So investment protection is another important thing one needs to bear in mind why there is a, a, a reason to uh, invest through Mauritius. Uh, and that's the little story on the whole thing. So uh, very important thing is whenever uh, you know you get into Mauritius or any other jurisdiction, now it is important to bring out commercial justification. And BIT and some other ones are uh, uh, those ones you know, which you can get in. So just to cut the whole story short now, uh, there are a number of papers on your, uh, so one is private equity and private debt, uh, you can see that. Life cycle of India focus one, which we're going to talk today. Uh, fund governance uh, is the next booklet, fund structuring options. Um, then there is m &A lab. What we have done is uh, that uh, we take all the major mergers and acquisitions and dissect them like uh, post-mortem or some kind of laboratory test we walk them through from strategic, legal, and tax perspective. So th here there are three case studies, but we do a lot of them. So every six months we come out with uh, very detailed case studies. This will allow you to understand uh, the nitty gritties of uh, the m &A, apart from the macro level issues. Uh, for uh, those people who are interested in the dispute resolution, there are um, two books, International Commercial Arbitration and Dispute Resolution. Um, and finally, of course, those uh, there's a basic thing on the doing business in India with all the tax treaties. So these papers will help you, but if you look at uh, our website, you'll find lots of papers which are uh, linked to technology, whether they are e-commerce or even bitcoins. We have a specialized group on bitcoins. Uh, that could be a disruptive technology, depends on your uh, perspective on that. Recently, Vikram Pandit invested, I believe, $70 million in bitcoin. We know Kosla is high on bitcoin. So, there are different uh, people who have different take on the whole subject. Um, that there are on medical devices, uh, many other ones you'll find on uh, what we call our knowledge site. So that's basically the uh, uh, you know uh, way in which uh, we always work. Um, today's uh, subject is life cycle of India Focus Fund. We thought it would be very important for people to know. When you start with something, you have some kind of end in mind as well. So you should be prepared for that, so they are not caught by surprise. Nothing will happen as you expect in life. They always happen somewhat differently, many a times. But you know, one needs to know about, one needs to be informed about. So we thought it would be useful to start uh, and have this kind of a whole life cycle of uh, India Focus Fund, both a private equity fund, hedge funds, uh, what they call now FPIs in India. We have different acronyms for different things. Uh, so we have taken the whole uh, life cycle, right? From So first uh, session is um, going to be on uh, fund formation issues and in, uh, uh, for the India Focus Funds. Okay, uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, second is going to be on key regulatory and tax consideration for Indian investments and evolving structures that exits from India. Because again, Number of uh, you know uh, you know participants here would have experienced that exits in India is also not always very easy. Of course, it's getting you know trickier at times, but sometimes it is easy. But number of times it has its own challenges. So there is nothing impossible in India. All that you need to do is to know the rules and regulations, and within that whole framework, you drive your exits and. Uh, the third panel would deal with revised landscape in India for foreign portfolio investments. Um, and uh, next one is going to be stuck in a bad investment, how to navigate Indian promoters and courts for smooth exits. So there would be issues re relating to litigation, arbitration, and stuff like that. Uh, it's very important to know. It's very, it's not very common elsewhere that private equity funds get into litigation with portfolio companies. But in last uh, some years, in India, it has become uh, pretty common, you know, to deal with. So litigation is another important part uh, of uh, the game one needs to learn about. And uh, so we have put together this uh, whole uh, program. And of course, finally, John uh, is going to talk to about the road to the future. I think he's one of the gentlemen who has tremendous experience in India, at least since 1993, I know him. And um, he might tell a story about that as well in his own talk. But you know, how does he look? 
things going forward. Uh, now, these are some of the things that we have uh, done. In last uh, one year, I would close to one year, I would say, the whole sentiment in India has changed with Prime Minister Narendra Modi coming up and um, um, a whole mindset has undergone change. Four or five years were, um, you know, in many ways depressive. For lawyers, it was very lucrative though. And <laughs> so, <clears throat> but at the same time, you know, it, it was not fun in that sense, you know. Um, uh, so, so what seems to have happened is that uh, now government is very clear about a number of things that have happened and number of things that have gone wrong and uh, has taken more conscious decisions to change the way things um, have been happening. Of course, there is never anything like 100% world, 100% uh, perfect world. And, um, you know, we, we, we hope to see a lot more changes coming up uh, in the next few, few months and few years. I also understand that uh, uh, there is now uh, some kind of movement uh, to open up uh, pension plans to invest in private equity and other kind of activities as well, which is completely closed. In fact, a small percentage opening up itself will uh, take the markets to the next level. So that's another interesting thing that's happening. Um, interestingly, uh, I, I was just uh, uh, to, uh, visiting Gujarat. Um, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, taken another uh, initiative to start start international financial center in uh, Gujarat, in what is called it's called GIFT, Gujarat Infrastructure and Tech uh, City. Uh, so it would become more like an offshore financial center completely. And uh, SEBI has pronounced rules, uh, and other uh, insurance regulatory authority has announced rules. Now tax rules are uh, uh, at this point in time going through. Uh, and we are helping uh, uh, the government to come up with some kind of a framework for tax rules. Because if tax rules are not in place, again, we'll have a problem. But government is pretty pragmatic on that. Um, couple of things that have happened in recent past, there are some concerns on retrospective amendments uh, that took place. And the uh, MAT will discuss those issues in the course of the day uh, um, on the tax side, on the regulatory side. RBI has been uh, relaxing uh, the norms at times. Uh, that also we'll be discussing in the course of the day. Um, and um, But sentiments overall are pretty good. And um, government is in a hurry as well. But let's see how it unfolds itself in the next few months. Um, it's about eight, 10 months now government is in place. Uh, but whatever little it has done, it's I think most of it is in right direction. And one good thing is uh, that this government is willing to listen. And that, that, that's where we find a major difference. Uh, I must have met uh, uh, finance minister several times. I was with him uh, uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, the state finance minister, the, uh, the, the cabinet minister, uh, Mr. Jaitley, and um, other ministers. They are very, very active on trying to find out what needs to be corrected. Because one single objective of this government is to you know, uh, make India a great place to do business in. Because we, we've been ranking pretty behind and uh, of course to move billion people together is not very easy uh, as all of you know but within the constraints that are uh, there uh, overall i think things look uh, good um uh, th that's uh, that's something uh, uh, very positive uh, this year's budget has brought in some changes uh, what minister said and what has been done is slightly different which of course we'll be discussing in the course of the day as well but I just wanted to give you a feel that, you know, from where we were in 1989-90, I saw, uh, going nearly bankrupt on foreign action reserves to, I think, uh, swelling uh, um, of the uh, forex uh, uh, kitty in India. Uh, things are reasonably stable, and uh, we hope that uh, things would be better in the coming times. Um, Prime Minister Modi has been mainly focusing on external relationship. So I think in terms of international relations, uh, India has uh, done a great job in the last eight, 10 months. Um, as far as economics are concerned, Arvind uh, gave you a good uh, you know, macro level um, view of the whole thing. Again, things are looking better. So sentiments are better. Uh, let's see how things unfold. And uh, with those words, I think, uh, let us start the next uh, uh, panel. Uh, if anybody has any questions so far, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
come up and uh, tell or you've got microphone in front of you but um, otherwise we can go to the next one but anybody has any anything so far this was just general introduction a lot of things in the course of the day sit back relax uh, idea is not to just rush up things so you know we want to give proper responses uh, whatever you know uh, we can give uh, but i think that's the, i think let's do the next session now that would be good so and uh, each session we'll have some good time to interact so this is not one way speeches it's a, it's a two way um, traffic so therefore we call more like an uh, unconference so they are not only the speakers from this side of the table but the other side as well so feel free sit back relax and do not forget that after all the discussions uh, you will have tense atmosphere possibly so we have also uh, set up some cocktails at the end of the day so that would be in the nice uh, terrace upstairs uh, we are very very happy that uh, you know this thing has come about and i also want to thank uh, all the organizations uh, ivca to start with thank you so much uh, hkvca thank you um, hkise thank you asif ma thank you uh, apriya thank you and avcj thank you so much of course as we go along we'll uh, you know uh, discuss more but uh, this is something it's a great start uh, great response we are delighted we thought we'll have about 60 70 people but we ended up having about 140 50 around and uh, it's it's a great uh, i think thing that uh, there is a lot of interest in india and which is uh, making us uh, uh, you know very proud and very happy about uh, the thing in which the, the way in which things have changed so may, may, uh, may i offer a small token of appreciation you know so a moment to come on by you know so then we'll i think is it about two o'clock now yeah yeah announced already I was again reminded that don't forget to tell people about cocktails, you know, so thank you. <laughs> On the terrace up. And um, just once again, sit back, relax, interact. Thank you.